The Shenley Laboratories, producer of Penicillin Shenley and Shenley Pharmaceuticals, presents the Encore Theater. The Encore Theater play tonight, Dr. Eric's Magic Bullet. Our star is Charles Beckford. Tonight, Shenley Laboratories presents another in a new series of great dramatic programs. Some of our stories are fact, the struggles and accomplishments of great men of medicine. Others are fiction, stories of devotion to an ideal, individual heroism, or great courage. By these programs, Shenley Laboratories would remind you that medical science and progress is not cold in personal research or pages of statistics, but a warm human story told in living terms, whether it's the life of one of medicine's immortals or the everyday record of service rendered by your own physician. Dr. Ehrlich's Magic Bullet, starring Charles Bickford as Dr. Ehrlich. The facts are history now. The words have been recorded for all to read. The man has been set in his rightful spot of honor among those designated by science and medicine for immortality. Listen to his story. The story of a man against a microbe. Let us go back to his younger years when he was working in the Kaiser Wilhelm Hospital in Berlin. A man with a poor, undernourished body, sustained and driven by inner fires. In those days, he was not thought much of, and his laboratory experiments were ridiculed. But he became friendly with another young doctor, and through him, he received a most important invitation. Dr. Baring, I can't tell you how... Dr. Ehrlich, I'm delighted to see you. Uh, Professor Koch has called this meeting to announce a most exciting discovery. Very kind of you to ask me. Now, some very important men are here today. Uh, There's Altoff over there, the Minister of Science. No, no, over there, the one with the mutton shop whiskers. Come on, we'd better sit down. Here comes Professor Koch onto the platform now. Gentlemen... It has long been my belief that tuberculosis is caused by a living microbe. Today I am able to announce that the search for this microbe has come to a successful conclusion. I have discovered the cause of tuberculosis in the corp of persons suffering from this disease. It is a living germ with a long, rod-like shape. I invite you all to come forward and view a specimen of it under the microscope. Unfortunately, the bacilli do not stand out clearly. Only those whose eyes are trained in the use of the microscope will be able to see them. That, of course, makes my discovery of little or no value to the average doctor in diagnosing uh, causes of tuberculosis. It might be possible to see the bacilli by staining it. Ehrlich! Uh, what's that? Uh, who spoke? It was I here, Professor. Uh, what did you say? Uh, come down front, please. I, I can't hear you. Yes, sir. Uh, did you... Uh... Did you say stain the bacilli? Yes, sir. We must compound a dye which will combine with the substance of this microbe. Then the microbe will be plainly seen, for it and nothing else on the slide will be stained. Did you ever stain a microbe and nothing else on a slide? Well, no, as a matter of fact, but I have reason to believe it's possible. If it is possible, I advise you to do so. Your fame in science will be guaranteed. May I have a culture? Mm, by all means, but be careful of the contents of this tube, young man. They're very dangerous. Thank you, Dr. Coach. Yes. Good luck, young man. You'll need it. <coughs> oh, Paul, that cough has me worried. Oh, I'm all right, Hetty. Stop acting so much like a wife. You were saying, Emil? You've been working on those slides for months without getting anywhere, Paul. Maybe you should give up. Perhaps your theory is wrong. Don't say that, Emil. I know my theory's right. <coughs> Paul, that cold... It's too cold for you in your laboratory. I made a fire. What? Did you say you lit a fire? Why, yes, Paul. Oh, no. What? Well, what's the matter, Paul? You ruined my slides, that's what. 
I've told you to stay out of here. I've told you a dozen times. I'm sorry, Paul. Please forgive me. Look at them. A week's work gone for nothing. Uh, give me that towel, Hetty. We'll get them off the stove. Maybe they won't be spoiled. Here, put them here on the table. We'll look at them, but I haven't much hope. Emil. Look. The microbe. It's stained. The heat. The heat must have fixed the dye. Do you see them, Emil? Of course I see them. The red rod-like shapes are the tubercle bacilli. Anyone can see them now. Oh, this is marvelous, Paul, marvelous. My dear, dear Mrs. Ehrlich, will you marry me? My darling Dr. Ehrlich, of course I will. There you are, Professor Koch. Why, my microbe, a bright red. My dear Ehrlich, how did you do it? By applying fusion red, heating the slide, then washing it with alcohol the heat that does the trick. Ah, this is a great contribution. The doctors, little doctors everywhere, will be able to diagnose tuber tuberculosis with 100% accuracy. I, uh, I owe you an apology, Dr. Ehrlich, for my attitude toward you at the meeting. Why, you make me very happy, Professor Cope. Dr. Ehrlich, I want you to join my staff. What I said in irony holds good. Your place in science is guaranteed. <laughs> against the microbe. It was the beginning of the fight for him, and he would still be fighting when he died. They sent him to Egypt before they let him work to get rid of his cough. And while he was there, he began to study the effects of snake bites on people. And he began to wonder why snake bites were fatal in some cases, and not in others. So when he came back... <clears throat> this is your laboratory, Dr. Ehrlich. I hope you find it satisfactory. Now you can go ahead developing new staining methods. I'm very grateful. But with your indulgence, I'd rather not work on dyes at present. Oh, indeed? Well, in, in that case, you might join your friend Dr. Baring in his diphtheria experiments. The number of new cases is alarming, most alarming. It, it looks as if we're in for an epidemic. I'm afraid diphtheria is not what I'm looking for either. Well, then what in heaven do you want to do? Right now, I want to work on snakes. Uh, well, Ehrlich, I, I laughed at you before, and I was wrong. If it's snakes you want, very well. You shall have snakes. Get three more snakes and prepare them for me to collect the venom. These are depleted. Uh, yes, Dr. Ehrlich. Hello, Emil. What luck? Oh, every child I tried the diphtheria serum on died. It didn't work at all. I can't figure it out, Paul. With the guinea pigs, it worked perfectly. Me, Emil, but I'm in the midst of an experiment. Another time, I'll be glad to listen. Another time? Perhaps all the children in Germany will have choked to death by then. But of course, your own experiment must come first. Emil, listen to me. You don't know what you're talking about. When I was in Egypt, a man and a boy were bitten by an adder. The same snake. The boy died horribly. But the man wasn't even made sick. I'm only interested in diphtheria. Please, Emil, here's the point. Three times before he had been bitten. Three times. Each time, the venom had less effect. The symptoms became less and less severe. This last time, he wasn't even sick. Immune, huh? For weeks now, I've done the same thing experimentally. Infecting animals with gradually larger doses of snake venom until they were getting shots that would ordinarily kill a hundred of their species. Go on. All of which proves that immunity is not a quality of the blood, but something in the blood. Specific substances that are formed by the cells. A chemical army which destroys bacteria and poisons. Ah, I'm beginning to see what you're getting at. Look, this graph represents the development of immunity to snake venom. It shows how you can increase the quantity of antibodies to neutralize any given amount of poison. Yes, yes. Do you think in diphtheria? Why not? We have only to store a sufficient quantity of antibodies in an animal by injecting it. Not once, but ten, twenty, thirty times. You mean that the blood of a horse, perhaps which had withstood twenty increasingly large doses of diphtheria toxin, would cure a child? That's my theory. Paul. Paul, I, I want to beg your pardon. Emil, there's never any need for apologies between friends. Friends become friends because they understand one another. Here, let's get to work.
There's no use bringing any more children to this hospital. We can't do anything for them. They might as well die at home. I have given orders to put up beds in the corridors, in the offices. We can't let them die in the streets. Come in. Dr. Alec. Dr. Baring. What are you doing here? We have a new serum we're going to try. We were sent over by Professor Koch at the specific urging of Minister Altoff. Baring, what's the use? You tried your serum several times before, and it failed. In the laboratory, this new serum showed itself 100 times as effective as the old. Baring's old serum was good in the laboratory, too. Nothing can stop the epidemic unless it is this serum. You cannot ignore the possibility. You are right, Dr. Ehrlich. We cannot ignore any possibility. We will give the serum a last and final test. I will give you a ward with 40 diphtheria patients in it. You will give the serum to 20 patients and withhold it from the rest. If there is a higher percentage of recovery among the patients treated than among the untreated ones, we will know the serum has some value. As long as there's a chance the serum may work, I think we should give it to everybody. Only with a controlled experiment can we establish the value of your serum once and for all. So remember, 20 get the serum and 20 do without. <laughs> Alcohol. New needle. Too much. Check again. Another syringe. All right, prepare this boy. Paul, he would make 21. Look at his eyes. Did you deny him a chance to live? No, but Hartman said... I'm going to inject them all. Are you with me? I'm with you, Paul. You may be familiar with penicillin as a light-colored powder dissolved in sterile solution. You may have experienced the benefits of penicillin treatment by injection when you were suffering from a serious infection. Through a recent development, penicillin can now be administered in nebulized form as well, which means another step forward in medical progress. Among the firms who produce penicillin for administration in various forms is Shenley Laboratories. Shenley is today devoting its resources to the production of superior penicillin products, some of which are penicillin trochees and tablets to be taken by mouth, penicillin ointment for application to affected skin surfaces, and penicillin ophthalmic ointment for treatment of certain inf eye infections. In addition, Shenley Laboratories maintains a continuing research program for the study and development of other drugs derived from many sources and processes, so that tomorrow your doctor may have even more and better pharmaceuticals to aid him in his fight against disease. And now, the second act of Dr. Ehrlich's Magic Bullet, starring Charles Bickford. Ehrlich had a bitter quarrel with Hartmann after they'd finished the injections. And he and Baring left the hospital with the knowledge that if their serum failed, there would be objects of ridicule. They went to Alec's small house and began to pace the hours until they should hear. And at last, an orderly came with the ominous message that His Excellency Minister Althoff was waiting to see them at the hospital. Since when do young research men ignore the instructions of distinguished physicians? In all my experience, I have never heard of such a thing. I was wrong, Your Excellency, I know. But if you could have seen the faces of these children as they fought for breath... And if you had known that there was even a chance they might be saved... You may consider yourselves very fortunate indeed that things turned out as they did. Why, Your Excellency? Is there news from the diphtheria ward? Is it possible that you haven't heard? Heard? What? Every one of the children you injected is recovering. The antitoxin saved them... I am issuing orders that batches of the serum be made up and sent to every city in Germany. Gentlemen, have a cigar. Paul, I... I... I, I think I'd better sit down. I'm going to see that both of you young men get the recognition you deserve. Dr. Ehrlich, for you I am going to create a research laboratory where you can be your own master. What do you say? Well, there is an idea, a theory that I want to experiment on. A theory? Yes, I believe it will be possible one day to manufacture immunity to disease in a test tube. Mold little magic bullets to shoot into the bloodstream and destroy invading microbes. And what disease are you specifically going after with this magic bullet? Syphilis. Syphilis. <laughs> 
Ten years of study, experiment, experiment, study. Ten years. Gentlemen, we have two factors to reckon with. The poisonous effect on the cells of the microbe, which of course would affect a cure, and the poisonous effect on the cells of the body, which would be fatal to the patient. Each shall be represented by a line on this chart. The further apart we can push these two lines, the closer we shall be to success. When they are the width of this chart apart, we shall have found the magic bullet. It may take heaven knows how... Ten years of concentration and labor, of disappointment and progress. Ten years, at the end of which Bering, now a distinguished professor, came to see him. And an old friendship seemed lost for Bering and Ehrlich found themselves stranger. Oh, I have come here at Minister Altoff's request. He's been having difficulty with the budget committee. They don't want to grant your appropriation. Altoff has asked me to express an opinion as to the value of your work. He believes it would have sufficient weight to overbalance the opposition. Well? Well, it places me in a very unpleasant position. The idea of shooting chemicals into the veins of human beings fills me with horror. If you were not my friend, I would attack it publicly. I'm not asking you to be silent. Put it in writing so that one day I can wave it before your nose. No. No use doing that because you can't see beyond your nose. I'm sure you know how much our friendship means to me. No. We were friends ten years ago when your mind was open to new ideas. But we could never be friends with your present attitude. Good day, Paul. Goodbye, Emil. <laughs> Bering went back with his unfavorable report, and Ehrlich's funds were cut in half. But funds were secured for him from private sources, and the work went on. Gentlemen, we have discovered beyond any shadow of doubt that arsenic is the key that fits the molecules of which the microbe is composed. But it also fits the molecules of which the brain and nerves are composed. We must now shape our key so that it fits only the microbe. The days became weeks. The weeks, months... And the numbers on his great chart representing experiments mounted into the hundreds. And gradually, the lines grew farther and farther until the numbers on the chart reached 606. And the lines were the width of the chart apart. Dr. Ehrlich, the board of directors of the German Medical Association, has delegated us to ask you when you will submit your drug for recommendation. You must realize, Dr. Ehrlich, that every physician throughout the world is eager to use your new specific. No, gentlemen. I'm sorry, but I cannot release the specific at this time. First, I must find out how the preparation affects people with complications, with diseases, with high blood pressure, with nervous conditions. You must give me more time, gentlemen. I have a patient, a young girl... It would be a tragedy if she should die of this horrible thing. With 606, her life can be saved. I'm an old man, Dr. Ehrlich, and you will forgive me if I speak freely. I recall that some years ago there was a diphtheria epidemic and a young doctor unknown and transcended the scientific attitude to relieve some suffering children. If there is a remedy in the name of humanity, surely that doctor will release it to the public... There is nothing I can say in answer to so eloquent a plea, Doctor. I will see that you gentlemen get the specific as you require it. It was the gesture of the humanitarian, not the wise, emotionless decision of the man of science. And he was in trouble very fast. In how many deaths, Wolfert, do you have absolute proof that Ehrlich's compound was the cause? 38. As publisher of the most influential newspapers in the country, it is your duty to reveal the truth about this damnable drug. I have here an article of my own writing which will serve to launch the attack. I'll read you part of it. The victims of 606 were as surely murdered as if they had been stabbed from behind. How can such a dangerous drug be distributed in enormous quantities in our country? The reason is that its discoverer, Paul Ehrlich, and the Rhine Chemical Industries Incorporated through their influence with persons in high station, have been able to put pressure on physicians, health officers. If we publish that, Ehrlich will sue you for libel. I wouldn't ask anything better. A trial would bring everything into the open. It would be the finish of Ehrlich and his so-called specific. 
one of the biggest names of science would testify in our behalf. Emil von Behring himself. Before resuming, the court must once more remind all parties concerned that this is a trial of libel and that the sole question which concerns us at this time is, did Dr. Ehrlich distribute a poisonous product which caused the deaths of numerous individuals and did he continue to market the product for personal profit after he had knowledge of these deaths, as stated by the defendant, Dr. Wolford, in his article? A defense attorney will continue, please. Dr. Lynch, you have heard uh, previous witnesses in this case testify to the deaths of 38 persons. Were the symptoms in all these instances precisely similar to those of your patient, Frieda Metzger? Yes. And in your opinion, what was the cause of Frieda Metzger's death? Arsenic poisoning. Honor, of course arsenic is a poison. There can be no question but that arsenic killed them. I object. Dr. Ehrlich is injuring himself through testifying without legal advice. I want no legal advice. It's a question of truth. To a great extent, I am responsible for these deaths. It would not have occurred had I withheld 606 until I was able to test every reaction to the drug. These fatalities, however, have taught us that in certain rare instances... A chemistry occurs within the body which breaks down the compound and releases the arsenic. And now we know also that each of these individuals flies a danger flag, an intense itching of the skin, which manifests itself in ample time to discontinue treatment. In the future, the preparation may be prescribed to any sufferer without risk. Your Honor, we are not concerned with the rosy future which Dr. Ehrlich paints. The relevant point is his admission that 606 caused the deaths of 38 people. I am only trying to help the court understand the real nature of these deaths. The court understands well enough without your assistance. I demand that the counsel for the defense show respect toward my client. Gentlemen, gentlemen. I'm afraid that your observations are irrelevant to this issue, Dr. Ehrlich. Irrelevant. Next witness, Paul Mertel, who audits the books of the Ehrlich Institute. Mr. Mertel, is there a special fund devoted to further work on 606? Yes. It operates on the sums I receive from the Rhine Chemical Industries Incorporated. Does Dr. Ehrlich take money from this fund for his personal use at any time? No, that would be impossible. It is a trust fund which can be used only for test animals, laboratory equipment, and four salaried assistants. Your Honor. Yes, Dr. Wolford? In view of this testimony, I feel called upon to make a public apology to Dr. Ehrlich for accusing him of capitalizing on his specific. It must be remembered, however, that the main issue is in no way affected by the present revelation. My original statement that 606 is a poison and not a cure remains unchanged. I'm sure that Professor von Behring will corroborate this statement. <laughs> Will Professor Emil von Behring take the stand, please? <laughs> Professor Behring, is there any scientific means of proof by which it is possible to determine whether or not 606 performs lasting cures? Only time, which tries all truth. In your opinion, were the 38 deaths mentioned in the evidence here due to 606? In my opinion, they were. So that while no cures can be attributed to 606, 38 deaths resulted from its use. 39. 39? You know of another? Yes. Syphilis. But, Herr Professor, you have written and lectured against the Ehrlich theory of chemical therapy. Dr. Wolfert must realize that it is the task of science to discover the truth and that there is no shame attached to recognition of error. In the past six months, I have studied hundreds of cases, and I am now convinced that 606 is a complete success. 606 stops infectiousness. The individuals who are treated with it are no longer capable of passing on the disease to others. And if there is no transmission of the infection, 
the disease must necessarily die out. True, 38 individuals are dead from 606. But those dead must be thought of as martyrs to the public good. If ten times their number had fallen, I would still say it is all for the best. For through it, and only through 606, or possibly some new drug not yet discovered, can the fight against this dread disease be won. The court is satisfied from the evidence that 606 is recognized by the medical profession as the best remedy yet developed for syphilis. And it is the court's hope that this trial will not only serve to vindicate Dr. Ehrlich of the accusations made by the defendant, but also that it will impress upon the world the full value of his great contribution to mankind. Therefore, in accordance with paragraph 186 of the code, the defendant, Dr. Hans Wolfert, stands convicted of criminal libel and is sentenced to one year in prison. In view of the fact that he's not previously been convicted of any crime, the prison sentence will be suspended and he'll be placed on probation. Emil, I don't know what to say to you, how to thank you for your testimony. Don't thank me, Paul. For the rest of my life, I'm going to be thanking you. And so will all doctors and all people. Not only in our time, but in all the times to come. You're an honor to your profession, your country, and your century. In a moment, we'll bring our star, Charles Bickford, back to this microphone. But first, may we leave this thought with you. Is it serious, doctor, you ask when you are ill? Whatever your physician's answer, common sense dictates that the sooner you consult him about any disturbing symptoms, the more certain the control or cure of your ailment will be. Shenley Laboratories suggest you consult your physician when you're worried about your health. Have a regular physical checkup, even when you feel all right, and your chances of a long and health-filled life will be far greater for it. And now, here is the star of tonight's play, Charles Bickford. Ladies and gentlemen, to sum up the spirit of this Shenley Laboratories program, this simple and beautiful prayer of the physician, written centuries ago by my modern Nadies, seems to me to be apt and fitting. The eternal providence has appointed me to watch over the life and death of all thy creatures. May I always see in the patient a fellow creature in pain. Grant me strength and opportunity always to extend the domain of my craft. This is the prayer of the physician. It is ages old, yet today it is as new as the hope for a peaceful way of life for all the world. May we invite you to listen again next week at this same time when Shenley Laboratories presents Dark Victory, starring Franchot Tone and Susan Peters. Two great stars in a great story. Good night. <laughs> Dr. Ehrlich's Magic Bullet was produced and directed by Bill Lawrence and was presented through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, who this year is celebrating the 20th anniversary of sound pictures. It was a Gene Holloway adaptation. Charles Bickford will soon be seen in the Dory Sherry RKO production, Katie for Congress. This is Frank Graham speaking for Shenley Laboratories, producer of Penicillin Shenley, and inviting you to listen next Tuesday at the same time when you will hear Fran Tone and Susan Peters in Dark Victory. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.